Let's say you're working for an ingredient company and you want to customize your own acceptance sampling plan based on a producer's risk of, say, 5%. You have in mind that you'd like to determine how many samples would be required for sampling plans that would have acceptance numbers of 1, 4, or 7. And you need to determine which one of these is most appropriate for your situation based on the resources you have. In other words, how many samples are going to be required for these three different sampling plans. Okay, so this is really a problem of determining what is N for a particular alpha. And now I introduce to you this table that I got out of Dell Besserfield's Quality Improvement Book. It gives us the N P values for given alpha or beta values and given C values. So let's determine an example in which case we have a producer's risk or alpha of 5% and we want to determine how many samples are required when we have acceptance numbers of 1, 4, or 7. All that we have to do is look up the NP values, step number 1, for these C and alpha values. So the first one will be 0 0.355. The second one will be 1.970. And the last one will be 3.981. Now that we've done that, we can divide NP by P, which in this case is our AQL, our acceptance quality limit. And let's say our AQL in this case is 1.2%. So now all we have to do is divide 0 0.355 divided by 0 0.012. That'll give us 25.6. And in these cases, we round up or down to the nearest integer, so 26 samples. Then we'll divide 1.97 divided by 0 0.012. Then we'll divide 3.981 by 0 0.012. So we get 26 samples for the first case where our C is 1. And then when our acceptance number is 4, we get 164 samples required. And then in the last case, when our acceptance number is 7, we require 331 samples. So based on the previous lesson, you should be able to draw which is which in this case. Remember that when we have more samples or larger sample sizes, the curves become steeper. So in this case, the green curve will be steeper because it has the most samples required.